Hi guys, welcome to this video. This is going to be all about colloids, which can be found in section 13.6. So colloids are kind of like solutions and kind of like mixtures. They're actually the dividing line between a homogeneous mixture, which is a solution, and a heterogeneous mixture, which is a suspension. You also might hear them called colloidal dispersions, um, but we simply call them colloids. Now what they are is they are suspensions that have particles larger than ions or molecules, but too small to simply let gravity settle out these particles. Typically, the solute is usually large enough to scatter light, um, but it appears cloudy. So the way that you can tell the difference between a solution and a colloid is solutions are clear or transparent, even if it's colored, and colloids tend to be cloudy. So if we take a look at particle size here, so a true solution has pretty small particle size. Now, you don't need to be concerned about the exact size of particles. I just want to show you this particle diagram. So the true solutions have pretty small particle sizes. Colloids are kind of in between, and suspensions have large particles. If you have a suspension like dirt in water, if you just set it on a table, eventually gravity will separate the dirt from the water. That's a suspension. A colloid, though, we can't just set on the table and let gravity filter out. So some types of colloids. You have this table in your book, and I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but you can see some examples of colloids. Um, a very common example of a colloid is actually milk. So with colloids, um, we have what's called the Tyndall effect. So if you take a look at this picture, we have a solution on the left and a colloid on the right. Notice when you shine light through a through the solution, it goes straight through. However, when it hits the colloid, the light right here separates. Okay, so the scattering of light by a colloid is called the Tyndall effect. This is actually another way you can tell the difference between a solution and a colloid. A solution does not scatter light, a colloid does. So colloids are very important when it comes to the human body. Um, the most important colloids have water as a solvent. And the colloids can either be hydrophilic or hydrophobic, and we've talked about these two terms before. Hydrophilic means water-loving. Hydrophobic means water-fearing, which means the hydrophobic part of the colloid is not going to want to interact with the water at all. Now, in order for hydrophobic parts of colloids to interact with water, sometimes what you have is you have ions that are actually um, adsorbed, not absorbed, adsorbed, AD, that means it's adhered to the colloid. When you adhere some ions to the colloid, those ions are actually what interact with the water, and that's what allows these hydrophobic colloids to be within the human body. <clears throat> so some applications. Um, proteins in your body will actually fold up so that the hydrophobic parts, which are the nonpolar parts, are on the inside while the hydrophilic or the polar parts are on the outer edges. So these polar parts of the colloid are actually what interact with the water or with other polar molecules. The hydrophobic part stays on the inside. It's also very similar uh, when it comes to an oil droplet. So oil will not remain suspended in the water, right? It forms an oil slick on the surface. That's because uh, the hydrophobic parts are on the inside of the droplet and the hydrophilic parts are on the outside. So this is just a comparison, kind of a summary table for you to look at the solution, the colloid, and the suspension. So solutions is what we've been focusing on this entire chapter. They're clear, they don't separate, you'd have to actually do something to it to separate it, right? Boil off the water if it's a salt water solution, um, if it's a mixture of liquids, maybe you want to distill it, maybe you want to use chromatography. Um, and if you put it through a filter paper, the entire solution passes through the filter paper. Um, if you shine a beam of light, a okay, light will pass directly through the solution. If it's a colloid, it's cloudy. Okay, it still doesn't separate. You would actually have to do something to it to separate it. Uh, and the colloid also passes directly through a filter paper. Um, but a colloid scatters light. 
And then a suspension, which is also cloudy, will actually settle on its own with gravity. So we could think about this as separation due to gravity. Um, but the particles do not pass through filter paper, so you could also filter it. But light cannot pass through. So if we look at this effect of a beam of light, Okay, light will pass directly through a solution. It scatters with the colloid. It does not pass through with a suspension. So this table might be very helpful for you to add into your notes just to tell the difference between a solution and a colloid. And maybe if I asked you to come up with a procedure for determining if it's a solution, a colloid, or a suspension, then you can use this table to actually do that.